Hey, what's up? Caleb Basie here with another video tutorial. Today we're going to be covering something uh, that I really don't know what it's called, but um, I like to call it a cutout slash stroke effect. And it's this little bit right here. We have uh, these strokes animating out from these cutouts of these people's heads. It's for a little video I did for collegefashionista.com sort of like Andrew Kramer's uh, text stroke effects thing that he did, but with graphics. So uh, go ahead and take a video or a picture that you'd like to have this effect done to and bring it into Photoshop. You can do it in After Effects, but I like using the uh, magic wand in Photoshop. It's a lot better than the roto tool or drawing masks, I think. So, um... Go ahead and make a layer, a new layer, and then start selecting from the footage layer. And just make sure you got a nice selection going on here. Then go to refine selection and kind of tweak the settings to what I have there. And if everything's looking good, go ahead and copy from your footage layer and put it on the new layer. Go ahead and shy off that bottom layer and then take the eraser and just erase around the edges to make sure you've got everything because sometimes you can leave little bits and pieces out so now that you've got a clean layer what you're going to want to do is you're going to save that and then take it into After Effects just import it as a PSD and go ahead and make a new composition, change the settings to 2000 by 2000 for that footage so it'll give you some room to work around with to kind of expand out the effects. Rename this layer cutout and then duplicate it and then rename that duplicate layer fill. Go ahead and add the fill effect from the effects panel onto the fill layer like that and you're going to create duplicate copies of that like five or six then just rearrange those in order so you can have a nice hierarchy going on and once you got that you're going to start scaling these uh, the first layer is going to be 108 percent or whatever looks good uh, oh what you might want to do is just go ahead and go through and just uh, change the colors of all the layers before you actually start scaling so you can see where you're scaling these layers to so let's you know change that one to blue and uh, go ahead and scale that and change that to like pink the next one white and this one will change to green this one will change, I don't know, to um, aqua. So uh, what, what generally works well for this is just to scale each successive layer up by like 10% from the previous until you get this nice, uh, it kind of looks like an I love the 70s type of stroke effect or something. I'm not really sure what it's called, but it's kind of interesting. Oh, uh, you're also going to want to make sure the uh, anchor point is moved to like the center of the image and you can't use the pan behind tool uh, once you have all these layers in place. You can do it right at the beginning if you just have the footage layer by itself, but you're going to have to select all of them and then move the anchor point as I'm doing here to make sure it's in the center so you get the nice even layers and not all bunched up together. And once you've done that, you're going to start scaling these out and animating these to get the whole animated uh, look. So go ahead and go to frame 2 and then set a keyframe for these uh, scales. And then you're going to want to move back one frame and then uh, set a keyframe for them all at zero. So this makes it to where it just animates over one keyframe to their... Uh, 
maximum state and then you're just going to take these uh, successive layers and then just move the zero keyframe to where the layer on top of it uh, ends at so you can uh, it starts animating when the layer before it gets to its maximum so it's like it only lasts like I guess like one you know it's just, it's just really short but it uh, you know it works after you've got everything animated what we're going to do is add a little rotation dynamics to the whole thing by uh, creating a new adjustment layer and adding the slider control on it uh, alt click on the value for the slider control and type in wiggle parentheses 3 comma 10 end parentheses and then you're going to select all the other layers and you're going to alt click uh, once you select all the other layers hit R and then you're going to alt click on every rotation value and what we're going to do is we're going to pick whip the rotation values uh, to link them up to that expression that you created so they're all rotating uh, the same way so go ahead and go through and link all those up like I'm doing to the uh, slider value and if you're unfamiliar with expressions you can always watch you know Andrew Kramer's basic training courses and he does a really nice job of explaining everything so once you've done that uh, it'll start rotating let me just drag the slider yep see everything's in sync and roti rotating together if you try to do that individually on each layer they just go in their own way and that's not what you want so uh, what we're going to do now is just kind of create a new comp and we're going to um, a new comp a new video sized comp like you know just an HDTV whatever we're going to take three of these in there and we're just going to have just a little animation kind of like what I showed you at the start of the video of just like these heads popping in and rotating so go ahead and bring out your composition that you were just working on onto the uh, panel there and go ahead and rename it so it's a fitting name and not what I just had cut out all right, go ahead and duplicate that a couple times. Go ahead and uh, position these layers in the composition how you want them. They're, go they're going to be uh, need to be scaled down a little so you can fit them all in there. So you got them all scaled in. Then you can uh, sort of rotate and position these the way you like. Just adding a little bit of rotation. They're still going to rotate uh, like they normally would in the other comp, um, but this just sort of puts them in different starting positions. Okay, uh, once you've got that, go ahead and select all of them and go ahead and duplicate each of those actually uh, go ahead and rename these so that they're uh, you'll know what you're working with once you duplicate the layers so once you do that go ahead and uh, select them all again and duplicate them and these will be still frame layers so you can have that steady state right like where they're not animating go ahead and hit the time and uh, still frame it and once you do that, go ahead and move these non-still layers out to about frame 15. And then go ahead and select everything and keyframe the position value. Hit P, then hit the clock. Then go ahead and what we're going to do is move, go ahead and select each group and sort of move them back at the beginning of the timeline so they animate into frame 15 and once you do that you're going to want to select the uh, 
still layers and you're going to keyframe the opacity so that they'll fade out once they get to frame 15 so it turns to the, uh, the animated layer. So select all your still frame layers and then go to like frame 14, set the opacity at 100%, then move to frame 15 and set the opacity to 0% so it'll just be the animated things out there on the stage. And once you do that, everything's looking good. Ta-da! Yeah, she's a cutie. All right. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching that. If that was helpful, uh, you can comment, rate, and subscribe. Uh, or you can... Or if you know, like, something that I did wrong, you can put that in the comments. Or if you know an easier way to do this. Uh, I'm no Andrew Kramer, so all input is helpful. Oh, uh, what I'm doing now is I'm uh, creating wiggle expressions for each of the... Um, layers so they can kind of be in their own uh, rotation and they all don't look like similar and you can actually add the rotation out here if you'd like and then you can go back into the original comp and you can disable the rotation in that by simply clicking off on the expression And as you can see here, they're all kind of rotating differently. Just to kind of vary things up a bit so it doesn't look homogenous. And like I was saying, you can go back here. And if you, sh if you turn off the visibility of the layer, it's not going to do anything. But if you go down there and disable that expression, you'll see that it just stops. But you still have this rotation back here because we went through and we uh, keyframed all of those layers. So that's two ways of doing the rotation if you did want the rotation. And that about wraps it up. Uh, I'm Caleb Basie. You can check out my website, www.calebbasie.com, or go to my channel. I've got plenty of videos you can watch and uh, rate and whatnot. Subscribe if you like. That would be great. Thanks for watching.